Our next speaker is uh, David Mahler from uh, Johns Hopkins. He's a professor of medicine, Division of Pulmonary and Critical Care. He's director of the Sarcoidosis uh, Clinic at Johns Hopkins and um, received his bachelor's degree at University of Rochester, his medical degree at Tufts. He was an intern and resident at Albany and uh, also a resident and fellow at University of Cincinnati. Did a fellowship at NIH. He's published uh, 40 peer-reviewed original publications, 12 invited lecture uh, reviews, 21 book chapters. He's been he's associate editor of Sarcoidosis, Vascularized and Diffuse Lung Disease. And he's going to give us an update today on uh, interstitial lung disease. Well, thank you, Dr. McLean. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. McLean and the organizers for inviting me. Uh, I am uh, from the Division of Pulmonary and Critical Care. And it's so nice for me to talk in front of a, a rheumatology group. Okay. In terms of disclosures, uh, I, have, I have none. Um, I do have received financial support, which I will uh, list on the next slide. Um, and I will discuss off-label and non-FDA approved therapies for IPF and other interstitial lung diseases. I have received support, and our group has received support over the years from the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, the Udawood Foundation, the Life and Breath Foundation, the Foundation for Sarcoidosis Research, and the American Thoracic Society. Well, it's a daunting task to give an update on interstitial lung disease because there are so many different forms and they're quite a heterogeneous group of disorders, as you know. Today I'm going, whoop, today I'm going to focus on the idiopathic interstitial uh, pneumonias. Here's a classification uh, in 2002 by the American Thoracic Society and the European Respiratory Society, which basically uh, grouped uh, the idiopathic interstitial pneumonias with a major focus on idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. And I al will also discuss nonspecific interstitial pneumonia, DIP, respiratory bronchiolitis, and also cryptogenic organizing pneumonia in terms of updates today. Now, at that time, <laughs> there was a, a, a consensus that basically these disorders are not only based on a histologic pattern, but they really depend on a total clinical, radiologic, and pathologic diagnosis in terms of distinguishing these diseases and their clinical course. Now, in terms of the diagnostic process, uh, because this is such a large group of uh, disorders and they can present very similarly, it's been difficult to determine who should get a biopsy, who should, uh, do we need to do a bronchoscopy, and who do, can we get away with just a radiographic uh, interpretation. And here is shown a, a flow chart in terms of what uh, is recommended in terms of a history, physical, uh, standard chest x-ray and lung function test. And then depending on those findings, very important is the central role of high resolution CT scanning. In fact, some patients with the proper uh, history, uh, physical uh, diagnosis and a typical chest CT findings, it is now considered that a biopsy is not needed to diagnose idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. In other patients in wh which have, uh, who have atypical clinical features or they have a differential that includes other diffuse lung diseases such as sarcoidosis, then a bronchoscopy with a transbronchial uh, biopsy and or a surgical lung biopsy will be needed to make a confident diagnosis. Now, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis uh, is uh, characterized on pathology by usual interstitial pneumonia. It is characterized by temporal heterogeneity in the pathologic uh, specimen with both areas of active fibrosis, inflammation, honeycombing, and other areas of normal appearing lung. It is one of the more common interstitial lung uh, diseases, idiopathic interstitial lung diseases, and it typically is seen in patients 50, 55 years or older and presents with exertional dyspnea and hypoxia. The course, as we'll discuss, is unpredictable, but the uh, progress or the prognosis is quite poor. In fact, the median survival is two to three years, so it's best to think of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis in terms of the same kind of prognosis 